Hello everybody, my name is Leo Ramos. I'm one of the new instructors at the Yellow Barn Studio. I'm also going to be one of the instructors that's taking over um, or filling in for Gonzalo while he's on his sabbatical. Um, I decided to make this portrait demo or this video of a portrait for any potential students that are interested in seeing how I approach uh, pastel painting. So I'm working with uh, Munguillo pastels, which are the cheapest, basically entry level pastels you can get. Um, and I, I did that specifically because one of the things I, I believe as an artist is that you don't need, you know, a thousand dollar pastel set to make good work. And I figured most people starting out in pastels will probably try out these. Um, Later on, I can make more videos using some of the nicer pastels like San Elier or Caran Diache, which I'm probably butchering that name. But in any case, um, I'm working on a wood panel that I primed myself. These are the same wood panels that I use when I oil paint. I just like the way they feel. Um, I, I will use pastels on paper, but I prefer the panels. It's, ju it's just a personal preference. So. When I start out on a portrait, I try to block in um, all the areas first, all the masses, and I start with the middle tones, not the lightest lights or the darkest darks, but the in-between tones. And I try to I try to think abstractly, and that that's the same for basically any subject matter I'm taking on, whether it be a portrait, a still life, a landscape painting. I, I approach it abstractly at first. I want to get the mass in the square or in the canvas or in the panel and see how it fits in relation to the background. And then I'll start, you know, usually, excuse me, I'll start going more into detail. Um, and when I say detail, I'm not talking about trying to get every single eyelash. What I mean is I, I give the viewer more information or I give the the work more information Steve Jobs was famously quoted as saying the real art is knowing what to leave out not what to put in but what most people don't know is that about 50 years before him group ace said basically the same thing painting is all about knowing what to leave out <laughs> but in any case um I keep that those words or I keep that idea in my mind when I'm painting and what I'll often find is that I'll overwork a painting and then I'll go back and undo a lot of the things that I've done um, and that typically happens when I if, if in a work day I, I'm on my first painting it's typically when it happens it's when I'm stiffer but once I'm loosened up I tend to not overwork or I, I tend to block out some of the unnecessary things that I don't really need to be paying attention to which is a lot harder than it sounds you know who would have thought that doing less is more difficult than doing more and we do I do that for a very specific reason in that after I'm done with the piece I'm not gonna be the only person looking at it and I want it to be something interesting for the viewer and if I give the viewer all the information then they have no reason to stay in front of my piece you know their brain isn't working and trying to figure things out um, but like I said it's a lot more difficult to do that uh, than to overwork a, a painting um, if you guys noticed the time frame jumped a little bit ahead on um, unfortunately while I was working on this my cell phone ran out of batteries but I noticed that uh, we only missed a, you know, a few minutes of, of work basically the, the beginning of me working on the lips which at times I feel in a portrait that that might be one of the more difficult things to do John Singer Sargent said something along the lines that making a portrait was painting a picture of a person with something wrong with the lips or something along those lines and <laughs> I have to agree with him but luckily for me um, my model Tony has thicker lips, which tend to be easier to draw or to paint. Um, also, people with like beards and stuff, uh, or very strong noses or strong facial features, uh, 
tend to be a lot easier to, to work with and get a, a likeness of. When I'm working on a piece, of, or a still life, or a portrait, or a landscape, or whatever it be, I try to get, I try to paint everything at the same time. So I say, for example, in this portrait, I won't try to do the eye and completely finish the eye, and then move on to the other eye, and then move on to the lips, and completely finish that 100%, and then move on to something else. Instead, I try to, you know, get a little bit of everything in at the same time, and work it all together so I could at any point stop um, and everything would roughly be in the same stage um, I also try to work in the colors that I see in the background into the the subject so in the shadows uh, on the left side of the face I, I use some of the lighter blue that I was using in the background and then I cross hatched that with some of the ochre tones and some of the more skin color tones. I also saw a reflection on the bottom of his chin, which had, a, it felt very red and I might've exaggerated it a little. I, I used my artistic license on that. You know, we're allowed to do that. Um, and that was the red reflecting off his, his shirt. Uh, I'm also very conscious of feeling temperature when I'm working on a piece, whether it feels cool or warm, does the shadow feel cooler or does it feel warmer? Uh, is it, you know, a, a warm red or a cool red or a warm blue or a cool blue? And just, of course, blues are cool colors, but within the spectrums of blues, there are going to be blues that are cooler and there are going to be blues that are warmer that's what i mean i chose to do a portrait because I, it's one of the subject matters that really grabs my attention um, when i was first learning how to paint you know it's hard to find people to model for you especially when you're first starting out and your work isn't as professional looking um so i spent a lot of time doing self-portraits and you know, once I finally started getting self-portraits that looked like me and I was working off the mirror, um, I started working on other people and when I started getting like, and then I, I could get, it was easier for me to get people to sit for me, especially, you know, my family members who, who I really enjoy painting. For the winter semester, I'm also going to be offering a figure painting class and a still life painting class. So if anybody's interested in seeing how I approach uh, still lives or a, a full figure piece of work, let me know um, and I can make one of those time, a time lapse video for, for that subject. At this point in the portrait, I got you know 90% of the information in, and I'm just playing around with subtle lights and variations of, of shadows and tones. Uh, but the basic idea, the basic portrait, is about 90% done. Um, you will see later down that I, I take my thumb. And I, you might have seen it throughout the video, but I do work with my thumb. I, thumb. I don't just cross hatch with a piece of of pastel. Uh, when I work with my thumb on pastel, I'm basically smoothing out edges, and I'm taking stuff away and I'm bringing stuff back. I'm just playing around and seeing what works best and I will change my mind a lot sometimes I'll destroy something and then I decide it was a bad idea and I'll bring it back so this portrait turned out a little bit a little bit stiffer than I would have liked it I generally prefer to work a little bit looser than this um, but overall I'm happy with it it was a nice little warm-up for the week and yeah, it, it, even if even if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it, the fact that you know you 
put the time in, that's a victory as far as I'm concerned. If anybody watching this video has any questions or would like more information on my classes, please don't hesitate to send me an email. I'm happy to respond to any questions.